Well, as we continue into more winter weather, northern Michigan's favorite hobbies can kick off again. Things like ice fishing and snowmobiling see a lot of love this time of year, but taking the right precautions could be the difference between a fun day out and a call for help. Up North Live's Josh Kerman brings us a look at what you can do to stay safe on the ice and how groups like the Coast Guard respond if something goes wrong. Most groups I spoke with Monday say it may still be too early to be heading out onto the lake for a winter activity. But even when the ice is thick enough, there are some important things staff say to keep in mind. You know, there is no safe ice. Uh, the other thing is to communicate a plan, just like if you do when you're boating, that people know where you are, when they're expected to be off the ice, so that they're sort of watching out for you as well. So people um, will recognize that there may be a problem. Miller says luckily they don't see too many calls up in the Sioux. And the Coast Guard in Charlevoix said while locals oftentimes heed the warnings and double check the ice before heading out, visitors may not be as prepared. But there are still recommendations even for people who have been doing this for decades. Remember ice, the information, communication, and equipment. The information, uh, know what, what the area is, uh, what the weather is going to be, uh, know uh, the type of ice that you're about to go on to, communication, like I talked about with the radios uh, instead of cell phones. So no, have a comms plan and then E, your equipment. Um, so make sure you go out with a PFD. I know it sounds silly, but if you do fall into the ice, at least it will keep you above and you're not going under. A PFD is a personal flotation device, and having proper equipment is a major part of the Coast Guard's response to ice distress calls. Bishop walked us through some of the gear they use and how a response would go. We bring a lot of equipment with us in that truck, uh, between the med board, uh, tending lines, and then with all of our guys changing out. Um, we'll get on scene, we'll do another safety check before we go out there. We're walking out to the person with the walking stick. Uh, always making sure we have constant communication uh, with someone inside the truck, uh, making our approach, and we kind of determine on how we're going to get this person or these people uh, out of the, the ice or out of the water. Bishop says the number one thing when responding to distress calls like these is safety. It's critical to respond calmly so you don't cause a bigger problem while trying to help. In Charlevoix County, Josh Kerman, Up North Live News. Okay, when it comes to ice safety, it's important to know how thick the ice needs to be for different activities. Experts recommend at least four inches before you can safely walk and between eight and 12 before you can drive on it. Right now, the ice isn't very thick on the Great Lakes. This map here is from the Coast Guard. These dark green spots, you know, in the Upper Peninsula and then down in Saginaw Bay have between two and six inches of ice, but these lighter green areas are less than two inches thick. Most of the coast doesn't have any ice cover at all. Right now, Michigan State Police is investigating after two Battle Creek police officers shot a man in Bedford Township. News Channel 3's Maria Serrano joins us live in Battle Creek, where we're learning new details about what led up to the incident. Hi, Maria. Yeah, two Battle Creek police officers shot a 22 year old man that they say pulled a gun on them. And now that man is in serious condition right now at the hospital. A neighbor in Bedford Township says he heard several gunshots on Christmas night. Last night we just were watching and relaxing after Christmas and heard like three or four shots. Police say earlier in the day a woman on North Bird Saw Drive in Bedford Township called 911 saying her boyfriend assaulted her. She said he went after her and knocked her down and she just got scared and came running across the street said she thought what she thought he had a knife in his pocket or something and was holding on to it and she was scared she was shaking like a leaf when she come over here she was and the baby was upset she was scared big time police searching for that man this neighbor saying he tried to help the woman and she was she was trembling and shaking and called the police and so we let her come in and wait for her the cops and her mother to show up. Hours later, police say the same woman called 911 saying the man returned to the home and had a knife. When officers responded to the home, police say the man appeared to have a handgun. Two Battle Creek police officers fired their guns and hit him twice in the torso. Police say they took the gun and two knives from him. I was worried about the young lady making sure she wasn't when we heard the shots. I was afraid he'd come back after her. Yeah, and right now those two Battle Creek police officers are on paid leave as Michigan State Police continues this investigation. We know that Battle Creek Police has body cam footage of that shooting. News Channel 3 has already requested that video and we're getting, we're waiting to get it.
In 2022, Michigan lawmakers passed laws that will make changes in 2023. But one of the acts of legislation that may have the most widespread impact this year is actually two years old. This was what was proposed and eventually signed into law back in April of 2021. In legalese, it addresses Michigan's criminal expungement process, but it's nicknamed the clean slate legislation. In a nutshell, what this does is allow certain criminal convictions to be, for lack of a better term, erased from someone's past. Supporters of this say too many people have both felony and misdemeanor convictions that are holding them back from jobs and a fresh start after they've paid their debt to society. What the 2021 law did was allow for certain offenses to be eligible for expungement, not violent crimes, offenses that led to death, or multiple felony convictions on the same charge, but rather crimes like first-time drunk driving offenses. When this was signed, the law was phased in over time. This year, what many say is a significant phase goes into effect. Prior to this provision of the clean slate law, a convicted criminal would have to go through a potentially lengthy court process to try and get their record wiped. But starting in April, the process could be automatic. Again, it's not all crimes. There are restrictions. But after 10 years without a conviction, certain felonies will be automatically sealed. And after seven years, certain misdemeanors. For those convicted, they say this allows them to start over. Their expunged crimes and clean slate won't hold them back on things like background checks for jobs. Opponents say that's a concern. They want to know an applicant's past, even if the sentence has been served.